Hi, welcome to this demo of Spectrum Protect version 819 and the new administration approval for restricted commands. This feature prevents an inexperienced administrator from running a command that might have unintended consequences. And so if you do turn on command approval, if an administrator issues a restricted command, the command is added to a queue of commands that are pending approval. And then another administrator who has approver status must go through and approve those pending commands prior to them being executed. Of course, the administrator could also reject the command, and at that point they would be canceled. I've listed here the restricted commands. The command approval process can either be done from the operation center or the command line. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do it from the operation center. Be sure to check out the other video, which shows the other way. In the Operations Center, if you go into Servers and you choose the Spectrum Protect server you want to work with and go into Details, on the left-hand side, you'll notice a new area called Command Approval. By default, the Command Approval status is disabled and the provers are exempt. The first thing we're going to do is add an approver by clicking on plus approver. And since I'm logged in as Sean, I'll add Sean in to begin with. And then I will add in a couple more approvers as well, including an approver which I've named no auth for no authority. And this approver doesn't have any other authorities, no system authority, no storage authority, nothing. And that approver is just for approving commands. Next, we'll set the approver exempt to no, meaning that if these approvers issue a restricted command, that command does have to be approved by somebody else. Finally, we'll go ahead and turn on command approval. In order to enable command approval or edit the approvers exempt, you do have to be a system admin. Let's go ahead and do a restricted command by going into clients and trying to decommission a virtual machine. So we'll go ahead and select this node and then go into decommission and hit enter. You'll see that it actually accepts the command. Then we get some warnings and these warnings tell us that this command needs to be approved before it can be executed. Do notice the request ID is also listed here. So if you did want to utilize that request ID, for instance, to do a query pending command, you could utilize that. Okay, let's close that out. You'll now notice next to the client, there is a little icon. And this icon shows that there is a pending command against this client. And this same icon will show up if, for instance, you tried to delete off a of volume or if you tried to change how long the activity log is retained or any of the other restricted commands, we will put up an icon if there's a pending command against it. Let's go back into servers or simply click on the server next to the client name. And we'll go down into the command approval and you'll see that now there is one pending command to decommission this node. But since I issued this command, I cannot accept it myself. Let's go into the properties field. And in the properties field, you'll see where you can set the amount of time that data is retained both in the activity log and the amount of time summary data is retained as well. We're gonna go ahead and change the amount of time the summary data is held. Summary data includes, for instance, the reason you approved, rejected, or withdrew a command. You will get a reminder that this is a restricted command, therefore it's been put into the pending status. So now if I go back into my command approvals, you'll see I have two commands waiting to be approved. Now one thing I can do for my own commands is I can withdraw them. So I can go ahead and click on the withdrawal and accept the fact that this command will be withdrawn completely. And now I just have the one pending command. If I click on the history button, I will see the history of all of the command approvals, everything that's been rejected, approved, or withdrawn. And if I click on one of those commands, I will see below the activity log entries that surround that command. 
I can also go into alerts and see specific information about the pending approvals. Search on the warning message ANR2742W. It will show me all of the pending approvals. The alerts relating to command approvals don't automatically delete off. So the administrators would have to remove them once they have either approved or rejected the command. Since we have this one outstanding command, let's log off of Sean and log on as the no auth administrator so that they can do the approval for this decommission command. The approver can be any administrator who has approval rights, uh, but if you look at this approver, we're gonna do a query admin format equals detailed, you'll see that they don't have any other Spectrum Protect rights, no system, no anything. So this is just an example of how you can have an admin who specifically only does approvals or disapprovals of commands. You'll see here in the command approval section that this administrator who has no permissions cannot do anything with the command approval status or the approver exemption status. However, they can go out and in this case, we're, go we're going to reject the decommission node request. Go ahead and click on reject and then, and then we're gonna give a reason why we're rejecting this command and then we'll go ahead and click reject. If you click on the history portion, you can see the rejection. And if you do a quick look, you can actually see the command listed below just in case you wanna copy and paste it and reissue that command for some reason. Let's go ahead and log out of this administrator and log back in as Sean. Next, I'm gonna show you how to turn off command approval. So we're gonna go once again into the server and then the command approval page. We're gonna click on the command approval status and the little pencil next to enabled, and this will allow us to disable the command. However, you will notice that this command must be approved by another administrator with approval authority. And so you can see the little um, waiting for approval icon showing up. Now do know we've got some other commands below here that are pending and also waiting for approval. Behind the scenes, we put those into the queue so that we can show you that once the status is disabled for a command approval, any commands that are currently in the queue will be rejected. Okay, we're gonna log off of the Sean administrator, log back in as the no auth administrator. You'll see the same pending commands here, and the one we're going to approve is going to be the set command approval. When we click approve, you'll notice immediately that it goes through, but it does give us some information about the other commands that were rejected due to us turning off command approval. So we'll go ahead and close this. And you'll see that command approval status is now disabled. You can click on the history and that will show you the various commands that were rejected due to us changing the command approval status. So in conclusion, the new command approval for restricted commands prevents inexperienced administrators from running a command that might have unintended consequences. This feature can be turned on or off and it can be used either from the operation center or the command line. Thank you very much.